are back. Hey, we're back. Thank hey, you for that. sticking with us, those of you who did. Definitely. Thank you for yeah. waiting while we took Pardon a break. Pardon any, any leftover crunchy crunching. I ate yeah. my pickle happily off mic. That's right. I had chicken and mashed potatoes and green beans. Nice. Oh. <sighs> nice, nice, nice. I feel like I'm almost too tall for my shot. My, I didn't my, even think about it. My, oh, well. my jealousy knows no bounds right now. Goodness. What did we have yeah. for dinner? Uh, you had a burger. A pickle. I had, yes, I had a slice of wickle. Is that what they're called? Wickles? Wickles. Wicked pickles? Wicked pickles. That's good. I've been on a weird pickle craze lately, but anyway. Jewel Rumtree also loves pickles. Makes her own. Mama taught her in Savannah, Georgia. Mm. Grows her own cucumbers. They're going to have some really pickled pickles when you get back. Uh, well, you know, Claudia eats them like candy. Claudius. Uh <laughs> That what? is not how I say his name. <laughs> you can be jealous. Claudius. Cloudy. Claudius. You call Clou him Claudius is a weather forecast. Do, do, Shut do, your mouth. Do you, do you call him Cloudy? No. For short. I call him Claudius. His mother calls him Claude, but he doesn't like it, so we avoid it. <laughs> cloudy with a chance of insanity should be there. Cla yeah, Claudius. <laughs> well, you know, he's a psychologist at heart, so he'll be fine. Hmm. Can't he? Can he fix that? Can he fix sanity? Like if I call him, can he fix my sanity? Yes, over time, a long time. Oh, great! Years. So the rest of us have to go to the insanitarium. We married the, till death do us part. The rest of us have to go to the sanitarium, regardless of the, whether or not we live together. In, in the twenties, it would have been a sanitarium. Is that the correct mm. term? For a sanatorium. It? Sanatorium. You get to go live with your husband, who's a psychologist. Yeah. <laughs> How it goes. <laughs> Okay, Claudius so let's talk I... about your time on the uh, Aquitania. Uh, I am loving living in the lap of luxury. Wow, I almost <laughs> couldn't say that, uh, even as it was coming out of my mouth. Uh, I, it has been some time since I have enjoyed such luxurious accommodations. Uh, are, the, are the four of you being social with the other people on the boat? Uh, I, I, I to some degree. I'm going to be because that's just absolutely my, yes. My nature as a private eye, I want to get a feel for the land, get to know people, find new clients, find new clients, <laughs> possibly work the room. Yeah, I uh, might be. I might frequent the the lounge area. The uh, ship does also have a library. I can go to a library at home. Sure, sure, sure. I'm just letting you know. I'm describing the ship. Oh, okay. I think I think Aaron is going we take, to take we take our Cthonian bound manuscripts and trot into the library and like hey look what we have <laughs> you want to lose your mind feel this it's I authentic sandworm I, I, <laughs> I would like to talk to you about our Lord and Savior Cthulhu, Cthulhu. <laughs> um, so you guys uh, spend uh, six days on the ship nice um, during that time. You know, it's three square meals a day, really good food. They, like, I don't know what would be fancy for the time, but it is real fancy. Like beef wellington every night, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not fancy now, let alone in the 1920s. But it is really top-of-the-line food. Like um, caviar, champagne. Yes. yes. Uh, only the best of the beef eater gin. Nice. Since it's, you know, a, a, an English ship. Um. Oh, that's a dry martini. <laughs> I need all of you to roll luck. <laughs> oh, no. oh, man, I love hearing that. Oh. Luck, huh? Are you sure you don't have your luck and sanity swapped, David? Yes, my luck is an 80. My sanity is a 70. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're Forget a, it. You're a disgusting Forget luck. about it. <laughs> All right, I succeeded on my luck roll. I actually made it. I made it as well with a hard success. <clears throat> I just got regular success, but yeah, just 22 under a 26. I'm very happy. <laughs> Your luck is 26? I got yes. A, well, you I, are not lucky. If you no. if you roll, the, so my luck is at 74. I rolled a 74, so I succeed, right? Yeah. Okay. Because it's at or below, is it not, keeper? That's correct. Cool. That's correct. I rolled a 34 under 70. Nice. Actually, it was a 30. Well, I'll say 34. Good it dice. says four now. Your, your dice are behaving tonight. Well, I told you when I was trying to roll to up my scores, I rolled a 7, a 10, and an 18. 
two extreme successes and a hard success. Nice. I was livid. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, did you also succeed, Dolphus? Yes. Okay. With his Excellent. 80 luck, I'm sure. I yeah. rolled a 61 and still succeeded, so yes. <laughs> as uh, Aaron, as your as the ship is uh, about a half a day away from docking in Southampton, okay. um, you remember a couple of times um, Elias talking about his buddy uh, Mickey Mahoney in uh, London. He runs... Um, he, he publishes a uh, weekly tabloid called The Scoop. Um, he might be somebody good to talk with um, while you're there. What was that uh, name again? Mickey Mahoney. Mahoney, okay. But what are your guys' other leads? What are, what are we here for? Where, where are you uh, focused in on? Uh, I think the main reason we were coming into London was to talk, talk to, to the guy at, at the, the Penhue Pen Foundation. Yeah. The Penhue Foundation. He said he'd have more information on death cults and possibly the bloody tongue if we came to London. Sure. Yeah, sure. he definitely did not want to talk to us via phone telegraph. I mean, it. yeah, it is, you know, a little difficult, but still. So I'm, I'm going to relay the... As, as we're, so do we need to go over... So we were talking about showing them the, the worm book... Yeah. Do we want to go over that, or just we just did it, and you guys were like, "Okay, it's a warm book." Okay, guys, I hope it's great. No, that's fine. You definitely can talk about that. Okay, so why don't we? Now is a good time. I mean, we're we're at sea. We're all kind of relaxing, and I'm guessing the suite would have a lounge area mm -hmm. that we can all hang out. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna be like, "So we're so guys, we are about a day and a half out from docking in Southampton." Um, I do remember recall. Elias telling me about a contact of his named Mickey Mahoney, who's in London and publishes a tabloid. Now, I know tabloids are not exactly reputable information, but he may have an ear to the underground and what could be going on. What most people would consider sensational news could actually be something that could help us with what we're looking into. Well, not only that, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be very bluntly honest. Uh, we got people after us um and this is a tabloid i just uh i can pay him and see about getting some pictures of us published even after we've left that's not a bad idea bobby that's actually a good way to misdirect yeah these cultists so let's keep that in mind definitely good thinking boom boom <laughs> <laughs> thanks so dolphus simmer down jewel dolphus um so on this voyage, you know, we were all reading the different tomes of books that we found. The one that I read, the uh, manuscript, the uh, people of the monolith, Bobby told me that he has suspicions that this is made. This, the book was bound in some kind of crinoid skin. Uh, it's crinoid. Crinoid. Okay. Uh, it's something that's monolith. referred to in what I was reading. Um, Cthulian. Uh, Cthulian. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. I'm just new to this. Cthonian. 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 Yeah. Cthonian. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Too many C, Cyclopean words. Mm-hmm. Uh, any, Cthonian. Cuckoo, cachoo. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. John Lennon. Twenty years too soon. <laughs> uh. Okay. Professor's is losing his mind. He read that book and went kooky. No, uh... Cthonian, I've never heard of such thing. What are you talking about? Oh, well, that's mm -hmm. disheartening, Bobby. We were hoping that they... Someone we, we, would know yeah. more about it. Look, these books are not exact... Some of these I mean, books are not exactly bound in leather. You knew it. You even mentioned it to the lady. I know you think that's maybe... I said that it could be anything other than cattle. It could have been... That's what you said to her, but I don't think there's anybody in this room who thinks that it's... Well, I didn't think it might be something called a Chthonian. I've never even heard of such things. And you thought that we had? Well, I mean, you guys, you know, you're an archivist in what, a museum. Higher education makes us crazy? <laughs> no, but more in contact with things that Bobby and I ourselves might not have... I mean, I would, if you two have... I have seen some things that are quite questionable, but I do not believe I've ever seen something bound and skin from something called a Chthonian. What even is a Chthonian? It's, it's, it's a sand. It's, it's a worm that in the sand. It's a, Giant. It's a mighty big wor yeah. worm. Yeah. Giant. 
Yeah. Dolphus, are you familiar with these things? Uh, giant sandworm. I've spent a lot of time in the desert, and I don't recall ever seeing any giant worms in, in uh, Egypt. Well, apparently, well, from what Bobby read, these wouldn't exactly be of this earth. Say what now? <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, Bobby. Now, I know that you've been frequenting the lounge, and you've been drinking a lot. Well, there's a good reason. Well... <laughs> Yeah, and tell me that this tell me that whatever y'all been reading hasn't exactly been a little bit off the beaten path. It's, this book put me off my path a little bit. Well, see, I did learn about something called crinoids, but I hadn't been able to talk to uh, Professor Hardgrove to see if he was familiar. So, Miss Rumtree, you're giving us a hard time about something that we've all never heard about, and you've read your own well, mysterious Well, you thought thing? that I'd know about a Chthonian, and I'd find that quite... I would have been a little bit happier. I don't know how I feel about We had the hope. I, I, I would be a little bit happier. Well, I just frankly. am interested to know how Bobby knows what a Chthonian is and that that's its skin. It's, it was in its book, and it, it looks like that wasn't a far-off practice. It was in the book that you read? Yeah. Hmm. Now, I've heard the word before, um, having to do with Greek mythology. Oh. Well, that's at least something. See? That's why we keep him around. <laughs> he knows things about things. Greek is one of my languages. Is it? I yes. didn't know you could speak Greek, Dolphus. Say something. Go on. <laughs> I was about to say something that would get us in trouble on the stream, so <laughs> yes, let's not do that. <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> okay. So basically, <laughs> we all read something, and it has not helped us one bit to glean I mean, any connections. Apparently, apparently, the Earth was, uh, I believe the term used in the book I read was seeded, as in they, you know, I guess, brought life to this planet so not bad oh i, I, f I mean well i guess it depends on how you feel about life on this planet but uh, for the most part it's good but yeah they were called the the crinoids well, and uh they talked about all all kinds all manner of things and uh there was some incantations or something in there and Incantations it's like just a spell, weird stay. like the Wizard of Oz. Is spells? that the hard? Is that the hardest thing to believe out of everything that we've talked about mm, tonight? Not really. Not really. But uh, at least I can touch the skin. I mean, a spell just. Well, I mean, I don't have. Any, I mean, I've never done look, the like before. Before we get down, then I end up having to get in a bottle again. Let's just talk about just briefly. What did your book say? Like I, I, I can R tell R you R that my book really quick. Uh was about a guy named Eben, who was a wizard of Hyperborea, or something like that. Hi Hyper is that Greek <coughs> too, uh, Dolphus? The words has some Greek origin to it. And he was in contact with some kind of crazy creature. But the thing is, is that my brain automatically thinks, so, okay, maybe some, you know, desert land, uh, I don't know, because sandworms, I mean... Uh, must be it's must be desert but you know whatever i i'm 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 drawing a blank on how this all lines up but so far we're dealing with stuff that's like nobody talks about right yeah for the uh, most part not in polite company what about you you got someone in your book <laughs> the the people the monolith no i mean the creepiest thing out of that was it was bound in some otherworldly skin i mean there wasn't a whole lot of information that we were able to uh, that i was able to glean from it okay I mean, yeah mine just talked about the crinoids what about you, uh, Professor? Uh, it was the ramblings of a madman. Uh, it was keeping a journal about contacting ancient gods and okay. sacrificing to the gods. And, okay. Yeah. So, so, so ancient And beings, other cults. So cults, ancient beings, things not of this world. So we got that. We got different countries with different cults contacting ancient beings so this uh, maybe there's some parallels here that we need to stop paying attention to so ah invasions of the crinoids <laughs> sorry about that that's <laughs> my cat neo <laughs> uh, so are we saying that jackson was <laughs> are he we wants to be on stream yeah, <laughs> it's fine are we saying that jackson was on to a real 
honest to God, well, apocalyptic. Is, that's what I was going to say, cult? Dolphus. Is how how can you say it was? I mean, it may have been the ramblings of a madman, but all of these sound like potential ramblings of a madman. And they all talk about weird ancient beings and well, I mean, you could say gods, that. essentially. That yeah. I mean, even the crinoids, even if they were just, Every if they're the origin of life on this planet, then the, they would equate to some type of god by our definition. Every every dime store book that talks about these things, they're always about end of the world kind of thing, you know, right? I mean that's like that's like the that's the bread and butter, right? I mean the only the only experience I have with wizard and magic was when I read Frank Brahms The Wizard of Oz and there wasn't exactly end of the world synopsis mm. there. I mean there was magic, I mean, but that was in the end it was just all smoke and smoke and mirrors. Well, we we've got the pieces. We're going someplace maybe that maybe whoever we're going to go talk to can help us line some of them up, right? I yeah, the Penhue Foundation should help us. Yeah. And then Mickey should be able to give us some information on potentially any cult happenings that are How in How long London. has he been in the tabloid business? I, I just remember that Elias has, had mentioned him one time that he was a contact in London of his and that even though he ran a tabloid, he usually has ear to good information. Because I'm like, I, I, wonder if, uh, I wonder if he might have known about the uh, party when they came in. They were all big names. He might. He might have more information on that. You know, maybe tell us some of the places they went. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping whoever at the Penhue Foundation would have more information on that, considering you know their benefactor and leader disappeared on this quest. Yeah, they might be interested in helping us research more into it. This, this, I am going to say uh, at the same time, I'm not going to be at all surprised if they are a little bit like the uh, Juju House. The Penhue Foundation? I don't. That, 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 that situation with the Juju House was more than I can. I don't. I, I'm still of a mind that we don't need to talk about what happened there. I don't <laughs> think we need to worry about that it because burned. because the the information on on Sir Aubrey Penhue. I mean, he was up and up. I mean, he, he was very legitimate. He was well known. Okay. I don't okay. think he would have necessarily been involved in. Well. The I mean, dark manifestations of some elder god. I didn't think then we were going to find we, that. Uh, I was going to say, well, what do we expect to find at the Pinhue Foundation? I'm hoping for more information or at least... I mean, after we've learned all this, I don't know if they're going to have anything on Chthonians and Crinoids and I think we might people keep, of the myth, we, monolith. We may keep that more to ourselves okay. until we get a better feel on what they're I, willing to believe or know. I mean, I was willing to say a whole lot in front of Erica Carlisle, but we needed her help. Oh, yeah. And she has seen some things. I think when we go to the Penny Foundation, we keep it to the minimum of what we told Erica. We tell her, you know, we use Bobby's social connections, hopefully to get us in if they don't let us in right away. This is a different world. Different world, but you, you know how to navigate your ways through the, uh, yeah. the, the high muckety mucks of the world. Relatively, but this is, uh, in the way that we kind of put it, this is old money versus new money. And we're going to a place where I'm considered new money. It's true. Um, but I think whoever we talk to at the Penhu Foundation, we let them know that we have evidence that the expedition survived, and they may be more willing once we show them our proof to give us information we may or may not have. I mean, we won't know until we talk. Oh yeah, to no, them. I'm I'm completely I'm completely ready for that. No, I, let's get whatever we can. You know, you know, and then I think once we have our information, I think we will start heading to Africa. Africa? Yeah. Unless we want to go to Australia first and talk about death cults of the Caribbean. <laughs> or Polynesian death well, cults. I'm saving Australia I mean, for when I really want to disappear. I will say that I do think death cult, you know, talking to Anthony Cowles, he'd probably still have some good information. I, I can't imagine that death cults would be too wacky or too differentiated. I mean, wacky, sure. But too differentiated between one regional location and another. I mean, they may have different rituals, of course, but... Right. A death cult. Is a death cult. Is a death cult. They have the same kind of goal. Could you not, cat, on my table? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, I do find, I do believe that Dr. Cowles would be, <laughs> sorry, would be a, a worthy visit. Okay. Well, that's, that's, so. that, that could, I get the feeling that, we may be on a time limit, and a, a side trip to Australia may be 
way outside of that time limit that we have. I don't know. I get a feeling like, that there's a clock ticking. Okay, but like I said, I'm I'm saving Australia for when we just decide to disappear. I'm with you on that. Like, like if, if we hit a point where we know somebody and something's coming after us and we got to get out of town, longboat to Australia, to a place that, you know, I, I, from what I understand, it's really kind of hard to sneak up on, a, on you in a country where you don't have, you know, a whole lot of big cities. And I'm going to stick to a big city, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I agree. So, anyway, that's that's just me. Well, I think then we know what we're going to do in London. We're going to go to the Penhew Foundation. We're going to talk to Mickey and maybe lay down a few false trails so the cultists don't necessarily know where we're going next. Exactly. Yeah, sounds fine to me. All right. Sorry, I'm 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 whispering to the GM, so he's probably oh. reading. <laughs> no, no, <clears throat> that's good information. Um, so. You guys spend the six days. Sorry, hold on. Hmm. You spend the six days on the ship. Um, you arrive at Southampton. Um, Bobby, do you arrange transportation? Do you rent to do you get a car? Do you have someone drive you into London? Southampton is about a nowadays is about an hour south of London. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll arrange us. Uh you know, a ride there somehow. Uh, now I've got a different Beatles song. Stuck and then I'll, I'll do the driving considering, you know, I used to drive all around Europe during the war. So I kind of know sure. the customs sure. and which side of the on road the other side of the road. On. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you guys arrive, uh, what kind of hotel are we staying at? Uh, great, really nice kind of midline. I'm thinking considering the cultists, you know, that we may have the means, maybe we stay midline. Yeah. Something not too flance, fancy, but or, not not exactly a flop house either. Yeah, but maybe a little bit off the beaten path. Rooms on the same floor. I, Bed and breakfast. I'm going to recommend uh, two locations. Okay. Uh, we'll put one under my name and one one under yours, if that's okay. Ah, so yeah. split the party up, but not exactly split the party up. Yeah, that fifty-fifty okay. chance they find us. I'm good with that. Alrighty. Are they going to both be at Midline Hotels? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Across the city from each other, or near each other? Across. Across. Okay. And which under which name are you actually staying? Uh, we'll stay under Rum Tree because I, I, my my character's like they would probably be looking for Bobby's name since he is known to be wealthy. Yeah, I don't think we should use my name either, considering they had the file on me, so they might know Lockhart as well. So yeah. we probably yep, should do fine. that. I don't think they'd expect I, us. They only talked to me, but briefly, and I had no weapons or anything. Yeah. So they the police really didn't, to my knowledge, take down a whole lot of notice of my presence. Yep. I'm a delicate woman. <laughs> I saw a horrible death. Uh, I will ever so often my character will say if I mean if we're we're out and about in that area of town drive by I walk in and I leave a different ex- exit just so and they can get in a get in a cab yeah and somebody that way it looks like we are there ever so often to some okay. extent so but okay so you guys uh you guys get settled in the hotel it is probably midday um just after lunch by the time you get everything settled and checked in are you headed to the Pinhue Foundation now, or do you want to go to the Scoop? Where are you guys headed? I um, Let me call Mickey Let's first. go to the Scoop. Yeah. Okay. You want to call Mickey, or you want to go over? I or want... you want to call him to let him know you're coming over? I want to call, because he doesn't know me. I just know him from a conversation with Jackson. So let me call him to see if he's in office. Not let him know that we're going to come by, just if he's in office, and then we'll surprise visit. Um... He want... has a secretary. She says that he is definitely in, and he would be happy to meet any friends of Jackson's. Perfect. <clears throat> all right. So, uh, we're all so going you to... arrive at the scoop. It's um, on the third floor of a shabby building on Fleet Street, uh, not far from the Ludgate Circus, which means a lot to all four of, or all five of us. Who have, uh, I know. What I don't that think means. any of us have ever been to. What now? I've no, been I know. to London. I, well, I know oh, what yeah, been to London. London. I know what the Ludgate Fancy. Circus is. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but uh, I'm thinking uh, Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of 
Fleet Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> I've been to a... London both out of character and in character. Yeah. Um, you meet a 40-something uh, so it's just red-haired... You, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad you, I, I'm glad you pointed that out, Roxy. No. <laughs> hey, I haven't been to Ireland and you have, so... That's true. That. It's it's like uh, it's like it's England like l- London but green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, no, sorry. You meet a, a forty-something-year-old red-haired sm- cigar-smoking man. He is your typical like Irish uh, teamster boss kind of look to him. He says, uh, "Yeah, um, I'm sorry to hear about uh, Elias. Uh, he was good. He was a good man and." Uh, you know, he'd throw me uh, an interesting story every once in a while. Um, what can I do to help you guys? Well, Mickey, so we're in London, and we're actually looking into who killed Jackson. I mean... Well, he was here two weeks ago? Yeah, apparently he came from London to New York, and he was murdered before... I mean, we were knocking on the door as... The guys that the cultists, the whoever it was, was murdering him, was leaping out the window. Yeah, I mean, when he was here, we talked briefly, went through some of the files. Um, I don't know that I know a lot, but maybe the stuff he was looking at is of interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. You, if you got it, definitely. Yeah, let me. Um, so I've got these. These are the three stories that he was really interested in. Um, Roxy, he put up twenty five. Give me, give me una momento. Uh, <clears throat> this is a news story from The Scoop. It says, shocking canvases rec- bring recognition. Local artists' monstrous scenes mock surrealists. Uh, now collectors can buy savage scenes which rival or surpass the worst nightmares of the Great War, but which are far more exotic than that grim business. Uh, London artist Mile, Mr. Miles Shipley work, Shipley's work is being sought out by collectors who have paid up to 300 pounds for individual paintings. This correspondent has seen dozens of works of the of artist Miles Shipley and finds them repulsive beyond belief. Maidens ravished, monsters ripping out a man's innards, shadowy, grotesque landscapes and faces grimacing in horror, representing only a fr- represent only a fraction of of Shipley's work. With all their repellent content, these works are conceived and executed with uncanny verisimilitude, uh, almost as though the artist had worked from photographs of alien places surely never on this earth. The artist reportedly is in contact with other dimensions in which powerful beings exist and says he merely renders vis- visible his visions. Mr. Shipley is a working class man without formal art- artistic training. And who has nevertheless made good where thousands have failed. Art critics say Shipley provides an English answer to the continental artistic movement of surrealism, whose uh, controversial practitioners have still have still to convince John Bull that the way in which a thing is painted is more important than what it is. Hmm. Uh, number 26. Already? One second, sorry. Police baffled by monstrous murderers. Inhuman killer shot, but still alive? Valley of Derwent residents shocked several months ago by two murders and a serious assault on a third victim are still without explanation or perpetrator of the dreadful attacks. At that time, Lester Adale farmer George Osgood and resident Ms. Lydia Perkins were torn to shreds in apparently unrelated murders on consecutive nights. On the third night, Wheelwright Harold Short was nearly killed, but managed to drive off a grisly creature, which he swore to be manlike, but not human. Constable Tomwell, also of Lesser Adale, believes that he shot and killed the beast on the night Mr. Short was attacked. Other residents of the region have claimed to have seen the thing since. Reportedly, Lesser Adale endures to this hour the bizarre wailings of the beast on nights near the full moon. Readers of the scoop are reminded that their esteemed journal's long-standing danger protocols and are advised that the picture, picturesque cloth, um, sorry, picturesque clothes surrounding the peak have it, and it trails off. Hmm. 
And then the third one, I think you've got that prep for 26. 27. Sorry. Slaughter continues. Scoop offers reward. An unidentified foreigner was found floating in the Thames this Tuesday, the 24th, in a uh, the victim in a series of bizarre slayings. Though Inspector James Barrington of the Yard had no immediate comment, sources exclusive to the scoop agreed that the victim had been beaten severely by one or more assailants and then stabbed through the heart. These series of murders have continued over the space of three years to the bafflement of our faithful metro- metropolitans. Must we hope that Mr. Sherlock Holmes, though reported by Mr. Doyle to be in retirement, will one last time rise to the defense of our majestic isles? Readers of the scoop are reminded that the esteemed journal has a long-standing reward for information. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And let's see, how many murders was that? So it's just been several murders over the last three years. Yeah. Uh, was this third article? Was it implying that they counted that body pulled from the Thames as part of the monstrous murders included in the second piece? Or no, is this no, a these separate, are three separate stories. Three separate stories, and that one and, was referring and to, to give you an idea. Lesser Adele is about a half a day's travel from here, from London. Okay. Lesser Adele. Yeah, it'd be like it, like for you guys in Texas, it'd be like, oh, over in a tiny town outside of Fort Worth, like it's not anywhere near where you're at. Sweet. Or for people familiar with the area, if you're just going to go from here to Houston in rush hour, it's a half a day travel. Well, just remember, <laughs> just remember how slow transit was yeah, in 1925 no. when cars. Um, to, to to get to Lesser Adele is a train, a, bo- uh, a a bus, and a car. Like no joke, you have to take three different things to get there. Huh. Okay, yeah. And at the end, a bicycle. Has any <clears throat> has any of this continued? This uh, this uh, thing, the the monstrous murders. And the, the... Yeah, are these recent? Are, like, how, are you are... asking? You're asking Miles or yeah. Mickey? Yeah. 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 Uh, I you know I have reported on a few more murders here in London. I haven't heard anything from uh, Lesser Dale. And uh, the artist is still uh, plugging along, kicking uh, out uh, art. Shipley? So, and is he local? Yes. Did it say he was in yes. London? Yes, okay, he, cool. he is local. So, Mickey, these murders, the, the one that just happened recently with the body in the, in the, in the Times, you, you said he was beaten? Yeah, beaten to death and stabbed through the heart. Did, so do the police know or do does the yard know that beating, was it done with fists or with an object? Um, uh, from my notes, uh, I, I think I remember that it looked like it was something harder than just some fists. Mm, interesting. interesting. Yeah, it's, it's potentially several assailants, right? Yeah, it's potential. Definitely more than one. I'm going to look at Bobby and be like, kind of mouth clubs. Yeah. Uh, Can you give me a stealth check on that? (laughs) Does he? Oh, he mouths clubs? If you don't want to be caught. If you're fine with being caught, don't worry about it. No, uh, no, don't want to be caught. No, that's fine. I succeeded. Okay, cool. Mark the box. Yep. Oh, you should have erased all the other marks in the boxes once we went through the advancement. I don't have an eraser. How to... Yeah, we're gonna have to get, get new them. character Out sheets. Out of curiosity, and... we can print some new ones. What your your uh, what do you call this periodical? I mean, what kind of stories do you do? Are these common common stories that you do? Well, the scoop only covers the most exciting, the most intrinsic, the most important news. Salacious, even perhaps. Well, I, the main reason I'm asking is do you, you so you don't cover like uh like society news kind of stuff because that's not really big unless it's like you know uh for, for scandals, instance, you know. For instance, Mr. Mahoney, would you cover something called or a uh, foundation called the Pinhue Foundation? Are you familiar with it? Is it something that you've written about before? I'm um, not familiar with the Pinhue Foundation at all. All right. Well, yeah, but so you, you, so you don't really cover like high society news kind of stuff, like what where the no like, no 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 parties. That, that's and, all boring stuff. Yeah, I, I, I figured that wouldn't be your thing. So, uh, do you have any contacts at the yard that would be able to give us more information about these murders? 
Uh, yeah, I could get you in touch with uh, the yard. Let me see would... where my list of people are. Hold on, I'm sorry. In the news article, that was James Barrington. Which news article? The for the third one for the murders. Yes, yes uh, I can. I can get you in, in touch with Inspector Barrington. And then, if we want to look into the the murders, the attacks in Lesser Edel, we would talk to Constable Tunwell. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm not familiar with Constable Tunwell. That was written by someone else who sent it in. Okay. Um, Lesser Edel's some distance from here. So, I mean these these are all past stories. I mean these aren't these aren't recent publications, correct, Mickey? Um, when I was when he was here two weeks ago, they were relatively they were they were. Within the last month. Is there any new strange goings on around London? Something that you haven't I mean published? you can look through you can look through our files if you'd like. No, no, um, I'm more I'm more interested I, but, in something but, that you found too strange or too odd to publish. For instance, if, if Jackson oh. showed up today, would there be anything that you might show him? Well, Jackson has a good eye for what he considers strange, so when he flips through things he picks out what he likes. Okay. I've, I've never had quite that eye. Okay, I see. I don't mind taking a look. You want to? Yeah, we can just spend some time flipping through things and see if we can. Yeah. Scrounge, if you don't mind, Mickey, it'd be much appreciated. <laughs> no, no, no. Go right ahead. If there's, if it's gonna help lead to you uh, figuring out what happened to Jackson, I'm, I'd be happy to help. Great. Cool. All right. So, is this like in the in crime procedurals where? Were delivered bankers' boxes now, full of files. This is the montage scene. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I will say that when Jackson was here, he he did promise a story about a cult operating in London, oh. um, and that it might even be well connected. I I will say I'll tell you this: I never got the story, but I would love to have that. I'd be willing to pay you guys up to fifteen pounds <laughs> if you could get me that story. Fifteen pounds is still actually quite a bit of money. Like it's 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 I mean, nothing that's to sneeze at. Thirty bucks. Well, yeah, in today's standard. Yeah. yeah, but it would have been probably pretty yeah, pretty hefty then. No, Mickey, I, I tell you what, if we find out anything, we will definitely give you the story. Yeah, and if you know if there's any other gruesome or uh, you know odd sort of story, I'd be happy to uh, to help that out. And if you if you happen upon a lady that wanted to uh, pose in her knickers, we'd be happy to pay for those pictures too. I see Mr. Blackwood there has a camera. I'm sure that he could put that to good use. I, I, it's it's, it's a uh, quite an know, offer, I, Mickey. You, but You may not uh, be familiar with young Mr. Blackwood, but I'll tell you that face he's making it right now uh, is saying that he's probably not interested in, in giving you uh, any of that. Good, sir. Fair enough. Fair enough. Just, uh, you know, if you want to earn some money while you're here, I'd be happy to take those off your hands. Earning money is not something that's in Bobby's... Need need needs. He's yeah. got plenty. Well, it was a it, it was a pleasure, uh, Mr. Mahoney. Uh, we'll just take a look at these papers. Uh, we'll let you get back to whatever it is that I'm sure you need to be about in publishing this fine uh, periodical. Um. So you guys are going to go through the stories. How far back are you going? I'd, I'd be like, uh, so if he was in <laughs> two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I and would, these were from a month ago, I would be looking forward from that time. Were they, was this publication in print yeah, when the Carlisle good. Expedition yeah. Oh, yeah, that's came, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, it was. Can we get some from, what is that, 1919, 1920, something like that, whenever? Yeah, yeah, we can take a look at those two. From about, or, or maybe even a little bit before, because uh, Jewel has a hunch that maybe Carlisle, if Pinhugh was involved in something, you know, perhaps something was a well-connected cult based in London, it seems like, you know, there could have been something that popped up in an article maybe in here. So why don't we split our efforts? Bobby and I will go from about a month after, from when Jackson was here forward to see if anything new has cropped up. And then you and the professor can look at the older stuff for any references to the expedition or any weird happenings have, then. Have you noticed, Dolphus, that they gave us uh, higher educated people that know all about Chthonians five years worth of newspapers to look through? 
Well, no, it's a... <laughs> just well, you know, you, I figured you guys were used to going through dusty, moldy things. Uh, you know, I am. Dolphus, I think he's insulting you. Can you... <laughs> I'm tempted to make a crack about quick. the lingerie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, I... didn't bring any to pose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bet you wish you would have packed that stuff now. Huh, <laughs> you you could have earned a 15 pounds. I just said in those two cases didn't have my lingerie. Oh, I didn't say there wasn't any. Yeah, I oh. should ask. I should ask Mr. Mahoney. Would you like pictures of me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that they will fetch a specific kind of crowd. They will fetch a sturdy price. <laughs> 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 Hefty price for a sturdy woman. Anyhow, let's take our boxes of, of newspapers and uh, blow the dust <laughs> off these old these old signatures and see what we got. Sure. Sure. Oh, um, again, all kitty. four of you roll um, luck, and I need at least a hard success. Shoot, that's a critical failure. We she don't gets start. Crit fail in this game. Start. Nope. John and I, I got excited. Yeah. Wait, I got I, excited. I, you said luck, right? Yep. yep. How do you know what is like better what's, than What's your luck at? 80? So, so 40 is 80. a hard success. I got oh. it. Okay. You can't spend luck on a luck roll. Uh, got... Tell Neo he also needs to roll luck. Uh, He's Neo, about to need to roll where's luck. Where's my small dice? I have some little ones. If we put dice out there, he will bat them all over the table. Oh, they're over there. Huh? Uh, uh, Neil oh. got an extreme success of eight. Of course, because he lands on his feet always. Always, such a lucky kitty. Uh, so did every who who succeeded? I did. Thirty-one uh, under you, seventy. There you go with your moldy, dusty combs. I, you know what? I have more luck than uh, wit. So. So, uh, Roxy, looking at uh, inserts three through ten. Is basically the information you're going to get. It's all public information, stuff we would have covered earlier had I thought to do that when we did the first episode. It's not a huge deal, though. Um, you don't get anything else specifically tied to the Carlisle expedition, though. What you do get is that um, uh, there there have been uh, reports. Of something in the fog, and that's almost all it would say. So put up uh, number twenty-eight for me. Alrighty, actually think I had that ready. There you go. I'm trying to get to the page that it's actually on. It almost had me. It almost had me. It was like uh, turning suddenly, knowing something was there, only to find nothing—a nothing possessing hideous life. The dank water smell of the cloying fog was replaced by a foul scent of smoldering hair, which somehow reached out and filled my lungs, driving itself deep into my body. I began to choke. It meant to kill me. I cannot describe the feeling, the terrible feeling of invasion by these foggy tendrils. And I still I and still I could see nothing. It's a it's an excerpt of a much longer article that Mahoney has um, kind of really embellished a little more um, by ghostwriting. And was this before or around the same time as the Carlisle? It's attack? written months ago. Months and months. And so this this attack was in London? Yes. So Alan That is really the only other thing that you find that really sticks out. Okay. So nothing preceding the Carlisle Expedition's time in London? That's correct. Nothing preceding or nothing around that time. This was probably... Like, um, let's say August of 2024 uh, or two or 1924. Okay. So only so like about five months ago, four or five. Six, yeah. Three five, or six four. months ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Did you tell us about uh, out of character? Did you tell us about the spell that you learned? No. no. We just loosely mentioned incantations. We didn't go into detail. All righty. So this article you found, Jewel, this is about some guy that was attacked by the fog? I mean, I've heard London fog was bad, but... Uh, yeah, you know, I'm sure that... I mean, he refers to the fog almost as though it was tangible. And he talks about, like, 
tendrils and uh, it felt like something very specifically was trying to take hold of them. Um, mm. And yeah, London Fog can be quite soupy, but it's it's not that bad. I've never I've never known it in to my, kill anyone. Uh, well, that's not true. I'm sure people have died in the fog a lot, but not by uh, the fog. But not <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, Got nothing. That's very strange, but I think it's something to take note of. I did want to ask because if Jackson was pr- promising an article on a well-connected cult based here do we have any information from the stuff that we got did it refer to anything any of his notes on mm. on the no but i don't want to exactly talk about that here oh well, that's true i i understand discretion um, is uh i'm thinking that the cult that he was going to say was operating in london is the same cult that we may have run into in new york but let's just, just leave it at that for right now <sighs> Bobby, before we go, do you want to ask Mickey that, or do you want to save that for later? I don't think that they were his cup of tea. All right. Okay, so you guys spend a couple of hours there. By the time you're done, it is dinner time. Shops are clo- or like businesses are closing. What do you guys want to do? Uh, Anybody know a good place to eat around here? <laughs> I'm sure we can find something. I mean, fish and, fish and chip shops are probably You know, we all could just, yeah, stop at a chippy and, and grab something and go on up to our room. Yeah, you know, when I was here during the war, they used to do some really nice mashed peas with the fish and chips. Mm, that does sound delightful. It's 1925. I haven't had a McDonald's hamburger yet. <laughs> <laughs> mashed peas still sound delightful. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> um. That's a no from Bobby. Hey, at this so point, you... people were still doing gelatin mold food. Ugh. Not yet. I think that came in the fifties. Fifties, sixties. Yeah, gelatin mold isn't having hasn't happened yet. Uh. Okay. Um. So, <laughs> uh, you guys grab dinner and then head back to the hotel. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I I uh, I don't know if it's improper or not. <laughs> not that I'd care, but if y'all want to come back to my room, uh, we can eat dinner in there. I don't mind. I'm stranger in a foreign land. What can I say? That works. For I don't particularly care what the wait staff has to say about me. Oh, I don't think the wait staff is going to care one way or the other. That's why we're off the so, path. So, <laughs> uh, the night goes by relatively uneventful. Okay. Um, you guys get up the next morning. Uh, are you going to stop by the other hotel and uh, have Bobby go in? And I would think so. Yeah. Okay. That works. So, Bobby, you're just going to go in, make it look like you go to the room and leave, or are you actually going to the room? Uh, I'll go up to the desk. I'll ask if there were any messages for me, if anybody came by looking for me. Uh, did you leave this information on where you were staying with people at home? Uh, you know, I hadn't thought about that, but I think my character would have. Okay, it's fine. You have a couple of uh, messages, one from the family lawyer just about um, moving some money around, just normal business stuff that you would expect to get, stuff that you would usually ignore because they're not necessarily asking you what you want to do, but they're more telling you what's going on. Hmm. Um, so you let you kind of let the businesses run themselves because that's what they're there for. Yeah. Um, but nothing beyond that. Excellent. Um, you might take... Uh... I would, uh, you know, I, I guess I thought of this after, but you might take somebody up with you if you're going to actually go to the room, even for a moment. Well, no, I was just going to. He's got his, he, he's got his pool cue case with him. <laughs> uh, forgot about that. No, no, what I was going, what I was going to do is. Uh, if we hear boom, boom, right now. <laughs> I'm going to pay for a very simple breakfast to be taken up and dropped off in the room. Okay. Well, and this is this the night still? Or no, it's is this, the morning. Oh, this is the morning. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're gonna have it dropped off in the room. Yeah, they should have a key to the room and be able to just put it in there. And but then know. they'll know you're not there. The wait staff will drop it off, and other people will think that I'm there because there's gonna be food there. And also at the same time, if the wait staff goes in and finds the room's been ransacked or something else, we'll find out about it that way. Good idea. That's great. I like how Bobby is searching by proxy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust anybody at this point. I am def- my my insanity is getting pretty low. 
No, no, it's it's, it's good. Um, and then you head out the back uh, and meet the car around mm-hmm. the corner. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right, and then you guys are off to the Pinhue Foundation. Uh, do we want to do that today? Yeah, let's go ahead and hit up the Pinhue Foundation. Let's go ahead and do it. I do think at some oh, point. Let's... What about going to the police station first? Yeah, that actually, I'm okay with that. We, we talking about Scotland Yard, the. Uh... Whatever the guy's yeah, name was. We had a contact they, there, right? Well, that was for the murders that have been happening. That Is was that in Lesser Adele. Yeah. No, that was the, the murder in the, th- in the yeah. Thames oh, was, was here. Tumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's yeah. been a series but of murders over the three years. that was when or whatever his James name is. Barrington, Tumwell. but is he... Is that oh, someone James we need Barrington. to talk to you yet? Yeah, I, I, I think we're going to really put some suspicion on us showing up and asking about it. What if we went to... A li- do um, libraries keep records of the papers? Yeah. Like the... the oh, the, the legit... The, the London the, Times. The legitimate press. The legitimate press, yeah. That's not Something that's yeah. Not, not... Not the fake news. Yeah, I would like, again, to look be looking for things um, even preceding the Carlisle expedition's arrival in London. Okay, then let's, let's find a library and search till about lunch... And then we'll go to the Penhue Foundation after. After. I don't want to waste the whole day in the library. (laughs) Um, Is that what you guys are doing? Yeah, that sounds fine. It's not a waste. What are you guys? Are are you guys armed going to the library? Mm -hmm. I guess the better question is, what is your default state? I am armed. So yeah, I I am discreetly armed. I am discreetly armed as well. I mean, I've got a concealed concealed holster in my and brass knucks in my in my clutch. Ditto. Yeah. I don't have the clutch. Have but clutch. I don't have the clutch, but I've got the brass knuckles on me too. Van, that that clutch compliments your your suit Matches and tie my eyes. so nicely, Mister Lockhart. I will forgive <laughs> your quote about uh, your uh, what you had to say about the library. I probably have my uh, case with me. But more than anything, I think I'm going to be snapping a lot of photographs. Oh, yeah. He's, okay. he's boom, boom, the tourist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Bobby. It was just funny the way that he so said it. I should, more, I should more, let it go. More like click, click, boom, boom, right? Oh. oh. Click, click, boom, boom. That's your new name. I mean, either way, it kind of fits. <laughs> oh. Uh, also, Shotgun Blackwood would be a good name. That too. is a good name. That's when we do our wild, our weird West campaign. He'll be Shotgun yeah, Blackwood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be it'll be like his great uncle or something. He'll be a sheriff of the town or something. Yeah. Trying to okay. think of something witty with splatter. You ready, it, but, Matt? You know. Ready for that, Matt? <laughs> I'm remember. Sheriff Shotgun Blackwood. That's right. Welcome to Deadwood. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to the place of your death. Go on. So off uh, to the uh, library. Okay, um, all, all four of you are going to the library? Or did some of you yes. want to go to the police? No, I, I think I think you were right about the, the... If we go to the police right now, it's going to raise some suspicions. Yeah. And I'm going to be especially leery about going to the police considering knowing that New York was corrupted. Mm-hmm. More so than normal. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Nah, but I'll probably not be going into the library. I will be outside, out front, literally just... He's walking around taking snapping pictures. Snapping pictures of the architecture. I mean, London is beautiful, Bobby. You could take some really nice shots around here, and if you see anybody in red robes, you might snap a mm-hmm. portrait well, or two. Well, that or anybody paying a whole lot of attention to us yet. Sure. So I am going to do <gasps> my... Um... It could be a tripod case for his camera. That too actually, late. Yeah, it's too, too late. late. It's a pool cue. Too late. Uh, Dang it. He could set up on the street and be like, hey, I'm taking pictures for I'm going to. Five cents. I'm not going to feel real comfortable with Bobby out there by himself. That's fine. You want to hover by the door with the newspaper? Um, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna do my whole detective sleuthing, skulking, ba-dum, hiding in plain sight ba-dum, kind of thing. Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. <laughs> just, and just keep an eye on Bobby and anybody coming in. In and out of the library, I can get a more discreet look at them. You can see if anybody follows us in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Professor and Ms. Rumtree, I need you both to roll library roll, library use rolls. Library yes, use. 
Which dice are going to do good for me at this time? And Bobby and Aaron, I need you two to roll spot hidden. Ooh. Extreme success. Oh, extreme success. I got a six under 50. Wow, oh, you did better than me. I, I so failed two my spot successes. hidden. I succeeded with a standard success. I, I've got 75 Excellent. and I rolled a 90. So, uh, Rumtree and Hargrove, you spend multiple hours going through the archives. Um, you find the same uh, stories about the Carlisle expedition. Um, you do see some no or some stories about bodies found in the Thames with similar um, murder um, details. The the stab through the heart is a big thing that comes up several times over a three year period. Okay. Um, what else are you looking for? Again, uh, and I, I don't know if I'm being too vague or if I need to be being being more specific, and I'm not sure if I can. But I'm honestly, Jewel is very interested to know if there was anything about maybe archaeology digs or any kind of findings, because it was rumored that Carlisle was looking for like Solomon's treasure and stuff like that. And so I didn't know if, or anything like mention, which I know this is 1925. There's not going to be like a keyword search or anything like that. But she'd be looking out specifically for anything talking about the Pinhu Foundation, Egypt, or even Africa, and digs, and anything that she thinks might have caught Roger Carlyle's eye or Aubrey Pinhu that might have encouraged this expedi- their expedition to happen in the first place. So what you get back, or what you find, actually this is the two of you, um, is that there are several news stories in high society noting that the Penhu Foundation has taken ownership of the entire Penhu uh, estate. There was no one else to leave it to. Um, And that Edward Gavigan is uh, handling the estate's processes um, while still selling off some of the property. Okay. Essentially, he's selling off the property to keep money because the property is very expensive, and without everything else going on, it's harder to, to earn that money, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, so he's kind of uh, the man in charge right now of the Penhu Foundation. Yes, and and the, the Penhu estate. Sure, they, sure. Like, so he has control well, of the money as well. And what, that was yeah. Gavin what? Gavigan, Edward Gavigan. Ed, Edward Gavigan. Which is the name that was written, yep. or that's written on the, or the the name of the business card that we had from, I believe, Elias's yep. pocket, and then... And, the, we, and the man you got the telegram back. Yeah, yeah. We, we telegrammed him, telegraphed him, and uh, he didn't want to discuss. He wanted right. us to come here and meet him. Just making sure it wasn't a different one. Do we have the, um, that telegram? Yeah. Uh, handy, Rex, I can see it again. Uh, the telegram that he sent back to us was uh, a Matt thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. It wasn't a handout. Um, if you want the... I have his card, though. I have the response. I don't have... Uh, I might have written it down. Let me uh, take a look yeah, real fast. I'm, I'm um, looking right now. That was in episode two, I believe. Have info on Jackson. Lots of info on death cults. Uh, come to London if you want more information. That's was, right. the, was the synopsis? Yeah, yeah. He didn't yeah. want okay. to. Didn't want to send information. Or sorry, have no info on Jackson, but had lots on death cults. Yeah. <clears throat> and I can pop up his business card right here. And so yeah, he's the director of the Penhu Foundation. And it is fancy. It is super duper fancy. It is a fancy business card. He has far more information. You know, in the twenties, business cards really were just like names. <laughs> um, and and still, even now, they're still a big deal. Um, mm-hmm. in in higher society in like sure. New York and London. Sure. If I learned anything from American Psycho, that's what I learned. Also, <laughs> Huey Lewis in the news is very underrated. <laughs> Did the, but they were the ones who did The Power of Love, right? That was in uh, uh, Back, Back to, to the, the Future, Future. yes. Yeah. You know, Huey Lewis was in that movie. Yes. He's the guy behind the megaphone. Yeah. yeah. So, was, so was, was the news. John they had newspapers always... all over the place. No, I, I <laughs> saw him live uh, a couple years ago. Yeah, of course you did. That sounds like a John thing. Yes. Anyway, back to 1925. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. I've never seen him, but... 
Anyway. So, um, other than that, you don't see anything that really sticks out. You know, note the murders. Okay. Um, the, there's not, there's, there are a couple of notes about, uh, Miles Shipley from a couple of different, oh, yes. um, uh, what do you call those newspapers? But it's not bad. None of it's like bad. It's just less embellishy um, than the scoop was. Like local artist makes disturbing paintings. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like a small piece in the art section, not anything more than that. There are um, there are notes or there are stories from Lester Dale, but they're almost exactly what you got out of the scoop. Okay. Uh, less less of the oh it was a, some sort of monster thing and more of a there were savage murders kind of okay. thing. So the supernatural and the weird stuff is played down in the in the stories you're reading instead of played up like it was with the scoop. Um, if uh, Dolphus and I are at all in the same area, when I would be reading about the murders and the bodies pulled from the Thames, I would probably uh, scribble a little note uh, next to my other notes uh, and you know, kind of tap on the paper so he could see. Then the notes would be something like, uh, especially around the stab through the heart, uh, you know, about, ri- you know, questioning if it's like maybe a ritual sacrifice or something. That seems very... You both could roll a cult. Okay. I could. I could roll a cult. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> I'm having a good night. I got a hard success. I got 13 under 40. Keep those okay. dice. I got 18 under 50. Nice. Okay. Wow. Don't forget to mark those boxes. I did um, indeed. This, th- this does sound like potentially um, some sort of ritualistic murder. Um, the beatings, not so much, but the knife sure. into the heart. There's a lot of potential for belief systems that go around blood and the heart um, well, and are are you know attaching us to this mortal coil and all those things something you know and in thinking about things called death cults Mm -hmm. i I can imagine that perhaps human sacrifice or some sort of ritualistic drastic bloodletting and sanguination and stuff like that is is definitely on par with what we're potentially looking at Uh, were there more about were there more that were just like beatings uh, no, no. If they, if, well, I mean, yes, there were beatings, but nothing that uh, looked like it might've been clubs like that. Like that. Did we have a name of that victim? No, okay. I don't think so. It was just a, um, foreigner, wasn't it? Oh, was that it was cool? in the scoop. It was a foreigner. Okay. Interesting. So someone who wouldn't necessarily be missed immediately. Unidentified foreigner. Okay. Yeah. They don't care. Someone who wouldn't be missed, or another cult member. Yeah, that's I mean, not a bad technically, idea. we're yeah. unidentified foreigners to most people, but <laughs> out of character because I'm apparently outside, not spotting anything. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that there's gum on your shoe. Dang it, they're new oh, too. Lord. <laughs> next time when you're trying to watch people, don't try and do it through the newspaper. <laughs> Cut <laughs> holes in it next time. <laughs> <laughs> Right through the Coca-Cola ad. Just cut out that girl's eyes and just look through. That's how they do it in all the TV shows. <laughs> Stupid British newspapers. You can't see through them like the New York Times. So, yeah, when we finish that, if that's if that's what we find, I would, uh, I'm sure we would leave and, and rejoin, rejoin our men on the outside. Okay. Um, you guys grab a quick lunch and then you're headed to the Penhue Foundation? Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. And so I didn't see anything while I was out there. Not at all. Cool. Awesome. Um, and then uh, you relate all the information you found inside. Okay. I take it over lunch. Uh, yes. Okay. Again, but in in a closed area, I would not talk about it in a restaurant. Like in the car on the way to a restaurant. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Are yeah. We, now are we are we in cabs? No, we're, I'm driving. Oh, you we rented a car. Yeah. Can you rent a car in 1925? Nice. You can if you have enough money. Nice. I've had a car. <laughs> Jewel, Jewel spends Precisely. the entire trip working on her British accent, and it's not very good, but she does her best. Abysm- it doesn't even sound like transatlantic. I mean, it's abysmally, abysmally, abysmally working on her. 
So yeah, so I busily. have I have hired a car. Um, so uh, the Pinhue <laughs> Foundation is in central London at a Bloomsbury address north of Oxford Street and west of the British Museum, roughly between Regent's Park and the Thames. It's a high Victorian building of fewer stories and uh, greater ceiling height than the buildings to either side and of altogether greater scale and elegance of detail. Um Within inside, inside the apartments are opulent. It's two stories in a basement, so in British terms, a basement, a ground floor, and a second and a first floor. Um, a doorman waits at the door, and once he lets you in, there is a kind of burly-looking secretary sitting out front. Um, he, the secretary, stands and he says, "Welcome to the Pinhill Foundation. How may I assist you?" You're up, Bobby. This is your world. Jewel says nothing. She just gives the burly secretary a up down. Did we we contacted someone here, right? Yeah, we we talked to you. Um, we got a telegram Edward from Gavigan. Edward Gavigan. I, I, Gavigan. If, Gavigan. If we have the okay. card, I would. Yeah. Hi, my name's uh, Robert Blackwood, and uh, I had talked over telegraphs with uh, a Mr. Gavigan. I'm hoping that I might have an opportunity to talk to him or someone on his staff. Uh, and what would this be in relation to? Uh, How about that? This is in re uh, relation to uh, a couple investigations we're looking into, uh, possibly also tied to a group known as the Carlisle Expedition. Okay. Um, let me see if he's available, and I'll be happy to um, see what, what can happen. Please have a seat and relax. There is a small sitting area. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll uh, kind of, I'll pass it one of my business cards. <laughs> okay. Take back there to him. Um, he disappears down the hall. As he leaves, the doorman comes inside and stands at the door. Oh, they're trusting. Mm, well, um, I can imagine. Uh, I read um, some things. Well, and looking looking around, I need uh, Hardgrove and Rumtree to roll archaeology. Ooh. I'm not an archaeologist, boss. <laughs> oh, wait, I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 36. That's going to be a hard success. I was just a museum curator. Uh, that will be just a regular success for me. It's a 43 under 70. Very um, nicely um, placed are some very well taken care of pieces of Egyptian uh, artifacts. Oh. Um, they're, they're, the walls are not cluttered. This place has a lot of just wide open walls where a piece has been hung or is on a, a, uh, a shelf or is sitting on the floor because of its height. Um, and there's only maybe three or four of them in this room in like kind of the entry room, but they are very specifically placed to give the room an aesthetic and not make it feel overwhelming and, and heavy. Um, they're very good pieces. They range from the third dynasty to the fifth dynasty. I think there's a fifth dynasty. I'm pretty sure there's a fifth dynasty. Anyway, it, they're all old. They're all probably taken from tombs or other excavations. Um, the value of the four pieces in the room is probably several times what you make in a year, Professor. Okay. Easily. Um, that because of their their condition, as long as they're they are as authentic as they look, there's a lot of money in this room. So the fact that the doorman came inside is not necessarily out of the question. Any uh, writing or hieroglyphs or anything that we can identify? Um, yes, you you have um, you have higher you have hieroglyphs that you can read. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, there's some pieces. They're just general what well, you would expect. These aren't any of any particular note other than they are nice pieces that look like they've been well taken care of. There's nothing written in Arabic anywhere, is there? No. Okay, cool. Um, after a few minutes have passed, the gentleman comes back um, and addresses Bobby. And he says, um, Mr. Gavigan is um, slightly busy. He will be able to see you for a short while. Um, but he does ask that you keep your 
your meeting as short as possible, and we can always reschedule another one if we don't cover everything today. Sure. I mean, we've only just arrived. and We appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, so come on back. And he uh, motions for the four of you to follow him. Um, <clears throat> Gavigan is an intelligent and polished man in his 50s. He is superbly dressed, and uh, he greets you in an office uh, that is magnificently paneled. Um, he wears a wristwatch, which is, which is a relatively new thing for men. Uh, most men, probably all three of you, have uh, pocket watches. Wristwatches are a brand new um, fashion choice. Um, Mr. Fancy. Don't say that out loud, Aaron. <laughs> no, I'm... <laughs> Are you impressed? Oh, yeah. No, my character is just like... Mm. His office is large enough that it has kind of a small conference table in it, as well as his uh, desk, some filing cabinets, and a few other... what you would expect in an office. And he motions for you, the four of you, to join him at the conference table. And he sits down and he says, um, so tell me, uh, you had questions about the Carlisle expedition. I don't have a ton of time today, but uh, uh, whatever we don't answer today, or don't talk about today... I'd be happy to, to get you on a schedule for tomorrow or later this week. Well, Mr. Gavigan, I don't know if you remember. My name is Aaron Lockhart, and I sent you a telegram just just a couple of weeks ago in regards yes, to— Yes, about uh, the writer uh, Elias. Yes. And, um, and death cults? Yes. Okay. We have found that this his death and the death cults that he was investigating— may be linked to the Carlisle expedition. And in fact, we actually have evidence that shows that some of the members of that expedition are still alive. Interesting. Uh, I have heard rumors, but I think it was mostly from Carlisle's sister, um, Aaron, I think. Yes. We've, we've actually er Erica, Erica. Do you correct him? Uh, I'm not. I, I do. Okay, that, no, that's fine. I, it's a question. Uh, yeah, no, I yes. don't. I don't do it rudely. I'm like, oh yes, Erica. No, okay. Um, yes, you're correct, uh, Miss Robertry. Uh, Erica Carlisle. Um, I, we spoke with her. Uh, she was convinced. I don't remember quite why, but she was convinced that her brother was still alive. And frankly, if I had lost my brother in such a way, I might also hold on to such things. I'm uh, sure. I'm going to reach into like a attaché case and pull out the evidence we have that shows that members of the expedition could possibly still alive based on when the picture was taken. A jewel looks uh, noticeably uncomfortable. Um, he takes and a look at... actually may even go... Uh, and then put her hand down. Uh, this is interesting. Um, definitely something to uh, investigate. And that, that is what you, you, the four of you are doing here in London? Correct. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yeah, I, I haven't heard anything. I'm sure that if you are headed to Kenya, I don't have a lot of contacts there, but I'm sure I could um, find some people to help you out while you're there. Um, this was a this was if, if Sir Aubrey is alive. I would like to have him back. I think that the, the Pinho Foundation runs better with him here, and he is missed. But um, it has been several years. I would think if he was still alive, he'd be back by now. Is there like an insight role? Uh, you can roll psychology. Oh, God, I suck at that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gavigan, no. first let me say, that's quite an impressive collection you have outside. Oh, thank you. Uh, you actually, now that you're sitting here, you see some other pieces. There are several of them. Not as nice, but as rare or rarer. Um, they're just not great for display because they're broken or chipped or, you know, something that makes them less than than ideal for display. Says yes. Um, we have quite a collection here. Um, typically, what comes back from the digs um, gets cataloged and cleaned and. Uh, where need be uh, slightly recreated, just enough to, so it's, it's it's discernible, and then um, we uh, donate or sell off our pieces as we can um, to, to cover the cost of the expedition, but also um, to make sure that the, the pieces are in uh, collections so that people can see them. And I'm led to believe by your correspondence that you're somewhat of an expert in the area of death cults. 
Um, I wouldn't call myself an expert. I'm well read, and I have others on my staff and friends that I I could talk to and get that information if you were looking for more. I believe that that uh, was at least my purpose in coming here was to see what information we could glean. Um, looking around, do I see anything that looks even remotely like the symbol that was carved in Jackson Elias's forehead? Give me a spot hidden. Yeah, me too. Sure. And do you have any knowledge of uh, any death cults that may actually be operating currently here in London? Can, can I? Push no, my, I will. I'm sorry. Can I push my luck? Or can I? You sure. Can I use two points of luck to? to you can me? use two points of luck. There's a difference between pushing the roll and using luck. I'm sorry. I meant I meant uh, using luck to. Uh, I want to take it down to. A, I had a 34. I wanted a 32 for a hard success. Okay. Okay. I um, I have an uh, extreme success on the spot hidden. Okay, um, so what would lead you to believe there's a death cult here in London? Uh, some things that we heard from uh, the editor of uh, The Scoop and some of the articles that we read. Uh, Jewel continues to look uncomfortable. <laughs> exasperated and uncomfortable. And I'm, I'm going to hold up my hand and be like, and also we ran into what we believe is a death cult operating in New York. I need everybody to give me a psychology. I role. was going to say, she, she, Jewel is very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> oh, oh, crap. Well, howdy. That's 100, right? If it's uh, all zeros, <laughs> yes, that's 100. Yeah, so that's is 100. this a one? That is a one. I got an extreme <laughs> wow. success that's in psychology. A, that's a critical success. With a 10. Do you get critical successes? Well, no, that's a, that's a straight one. Yeah, no, no, no. My psychology is a 10. Oh, yeah. Most of our time. <laughs> Don't forget to mark those boxes. <laughs> no um, joke. If you got a success, okay. So let's back up. Um, Dolphus, you got an extreme success on that spot hidden. Yes. You noticed that under all of the proper uh, British suit, tie, um, vest, like everything about Gavigan says that he is a proper British man with money including the watch which is very fashionable but would lead you to believe he doesn't have money but it it's because it's part of the fashion there is the slightest bit of leather um cord that you can see peeking out underneath his collar and you uh, Jules, you did not shut see up. this you didn't get a good enough <laughs> success we were not coming here to talk to him about Pinhu being alive I was even right. if he wasn't in the death cult anyway. This guy has control of all of his money, and you're just like, hey, yeah, he might be alive. We're going to go find him so you don't have to deal with this money problem anymore. <laughs> We're Americans, and that's what we like to do is make sure you don't have any money. I thought I thought Americans like to solve everybody else's problems. Well, that's what control. Lockhart is walking in telling people. Exactly. We came here to talk about death cults, and that was going to be dangerous enough. Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> Back in character, that when, was all out of character. When Aaron mentions the death cult in New York, uh, who succeeded on the... Or, I'm sorry, Aaron, you notice. Yep, I succeeded. There is just a twitch in his eye. You've seen that twitch before, where there is knowledge that, was pa that, that he has of that. I want you to roll an idea roll. Or an intelligence role. There is no idea in 7th edition. It is a 6th edition concept, and now it's just the same as uh, intelligence. I rolled a 25, so a hard success. You contacted Gavigan. Then the cultist showed up at your office. No, no, Nagi. you can't. You can't. Oh, yeah, you don't get to have your light bulb moment now. After the guy is gonna, no, no, I'm I'm working on the plan. This is this is gonna work. Okay, <laughs> okay. it's gonna work. I promise. Man, oh. I, I, 
L- Jules, should, should left... I reach into my bag and pull out one of those cultist robes now? And just... Jules left. Yeah, off... yeah, you should pull <laughs> yeah. out the club. Bring and be out like, the you know club, because we're just gonna show them everything. We're just gonna be like, hey, you know, would you like to see the lingerie in my case, sir? Because we're just gonna show you everything else. So is our ongoing theme now less pie and more Jules lingerie? <laughs> <laughs> she has a nice set of, of fancy knickers. What do they say? <laughs> what do they call pie in France? Tarts. Uh, 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 a Royale with cheese. <laughs> mm. I want a Royale okay. right now. Right. So um, I, I made the connection that after we telegrammed yeah. Gavigan that the cultist showed up at the office. I did not make and that connection, but Jewel knows no, no. that. <laughs> well, you guys all assume the police did it, or right. that it, there was a problem with the police, which was not necessarily a bad call. However, sure. you sent sure. a thing and said, hey, any uh, any information on Jackson Elias or death cults? My name is Aaron Lockhart. Here's my address. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. The worst private investigator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh. not fair. You can't. Oh. Oh, we're going to uh, die Aaron, in this pretty room. Now, now that you think about it. <laughs> now that you're using your noggin. Burning... The Juju House burning down might also be connected here. Well, I would assume that that I think is a for sure, right? I mean, I would assume they'd cover up their own mess. It's it's likely. And I'm, and I'm guessing this is all an inner monologue with myself that I can yeah, hopefully, yeah, no, no. hopefully re- relay to the. Jewel might actually have uh, either a hand on her face, like oh, to play it cool. <sighs> I, sorry, I almost swore. Oh, <laughs> oh, Lord! Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks is a it very. It was going to be the F word. It was going to. It was going to be. It's going to be Jesus's name. Okay, so but, uh, now that I made this connection in my head, I've got a plan. Do you see me grabbing my left arm as I have as I feel? No, as I feel another heart attack. Yeah, palpitations. Sensation. Okay, so <laughs> just from memory. I, I guess at the best opportunity, I am going to look at my pocket watch and be like, and pull out my garrote, my garrote, <laughs> and be look and be like, Mister Gavigan. Um, I know you wanted to keep this brief. Mm. In fact, we have some appointments ourselves that we need to follow up fairly soon. Can I leave our hotel information with you to contact us with more information? And I'm going to give him Bobby's bogus hotel address. Well, it's Absolutely. Leg- um, you know, on your way out, uh, speak with my secretary, see what I have available tomorrow, and I'd be happy to sit down with you again or the next day if you're if tomorrow is not available for you. That is that is great, and I appreciate you taking your time to talk to us. I know you're a busy man with everything that goes on with your foundation and the work you do. Um, we will leave Bobby's, our hotel that Bobby is under his name, we'll leave that hotel information with your secretary, and we will schedule something. <laughs> you don't something. say that. You, you don't say under his name. Well, <laughs> no, no, we'll I leave, know what he we'll meant. We'll leave I our know hotel meant. info with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we'll we'll set up an appointment for tomorrow or the next day. I appreciate your time. I stand up and shake his hand. So it sounds fantastic. Thank you. Um, uh, he shakes all four of your hands, um, including Miss Rumtree's. He gives you a good handshake. I give him um, a sturdy handshake as well. Uh, so... Was that the only thing to notice on the spot hidden? I did not get as good a one as David did. No, you you didn't. It was going to be a really tough spot okay, hidden cool. no matter what. Cool. Um, you know what? Actually, this is a great place for us to call it tonight. Okay. It's after 10. We've hit our mark. Uh, thank you guys for wow. listening. It, I, I've had fun. Uh, this I is great. That, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about you over there, Boom Boom? Gosh. Did you have fun? Oh, oh I'm having a great, a great time. time, and I was right. Gosh. I don't know it yet, but I was right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we will be back in two weeks on the. I believe it is the fifth. Fifth, yep. yeah, but we will be the rerunning. Fifth of December. We will be rerunning this episode uh, a week from tonight, normal time. Uh, just keep. If you've got, if you followed us tonight, we've gotten a lot of new followers tonight, which we truly appreciate. Thank you so and, much, guys. And um, yep. if you have and girls, click the little bell. I believe there's a bell in in this. Um, There will also be episode two will be going up, I believe, on YouTube. Oh, wait. Episode two went up last week, did it not? Yeah, the first part of episode three goes up tomorrow. The first part of episode three goes up tomorrow. Um, Tonight was episode four. 
Um, we yep. do want to send a quick thanks to um, Dicey Adventures. I believe the channel is Night Fury eight five eight three. I could be wrong on that, but uh, they, uh, you know, we want to shout them out. I, they're family of mine, and they run a D and D podcast or a D and D Twitch stream. So if you like D and D Fifth Ed and you want to see some homebrew. Uh, creation stuff over there. We're going to kind of cross-promote each other. We'll host them here when they run. So if you follow us, you'll get to see them too. But yep. definitely give them a follow as well. Yep, you've got us the, the, the 5th, the 19th, and the 2nd of January. We will still be doing this yep. no matter how hungover Miss Rumtree is. Uh, Miss, <laughs> Miss Rumtree is a diabetic and uh, will not be drinking. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, thank you guys for, for showing up. Uh, we were really happy to have you in the chat. And, yes. uh, you know, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank you so much. Roll us out, Roxy.